Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Blue Eddy AC200P. Let me tell you, this thing's a beast. And ever since this unit was announced, I really wanted to get my hands on it because it checks so many of the boxes that I think are important with a modern solar generator. And so thank you to Blue Eddy for sending this along. And in typical Blue Eddy fashion, by the time I got it, there was already a new version. This summer, Blue Eddy announced the AC300, which is an all new design, and the 200 Max, which is an upgraded version of the 200P. And the most exciting feature of these is that they're chainable, which means you can add multiple external batteries to dramatically increase the capacity. And the most exciting thing is, apparently, these batteries are backwards compatible to the AC200P. There's also an all new Blue Eddy app that lets you monitor and control these new units, as well as upgraded AC and USB outputs. We'll cover these differences in the video in a bit. The AC200P retails for $1,800. However, you can usually find it on sale for at least $100 off if you look around. And the thing I like most about this unit is this has a 2000 watt hour battery. With advanced BMS, it has high and low temperature cutoff. And most importantly, it's using a lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery that gives you 3,500 cycles, which is seven times the cycle count of a traditional lithium ion battery. And this is a substantial unit. It uh, weighs 60.6 .6 pounds is 16 and a half by 11 by 15 inches. So it's just a much larger unit, definitely optimized for home backup. And speaking of which, let's talk about AC power. This is packing a really powerful 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that's capable of 2500 watts peak. And they claim an 88% efficiency, which is pretty good. There are six AC outlets on the front of the unit. Each one has its own rubber cover to keep dust and moisture out and the 200 max upgrades the inverter to 2200 watts continuous 4800 watts peak on the dc side of things there's a lot of options there's three different kinds of output here first of all is your traditional cigarette lighter output capable of 10 amps or 120 watts and i checked this with my meter and it definitely is regulated at 13 and a half volts which is pretty good Beneath that is a pair of barrel connectors for connecting things like laptops. And finally, there's a really interesting connector. It's called an aviation plug, and it's designed for high power DC applications. And this port will provide 300 watts of power. For USB, there's a 60 watt USB-C and then two pairs of pretty unremarkable USB-A's capable of three amps or 15 watts of output. To test the USB-C, I plugged in my MacBook Pro and I was able to consistently get 55 to 60 watts over USB-C. And I just figured I'd test all the other ones at the same time. So I plugged in a bunch of USB-A, including my Sonos Move, no problem there. My iPad Pro, charged right up. I also charged this Anchor Power Bank and well, another bigger one. And everything charged fine but for such an expensive unit i really think they should have launched with higher quality usb outputs heck my ecoflow river pro has much better usb outputs luckily the ac 200 max will update the usb c to 100 watts and swap out two of the usb a's to 18 watt quick charge three and there's one other option for charging your mobile devices on the top of the unit is a pair of 15 watt wireless charging pads. And these things work great. I was able to charge my iPhone 12 Pro, my AirPods Pro, and they work flawlessly. But keep in mind that wireless charging is not the most efficient way to get electrons into your device. Roughly half of the energy that goes through wireless chargers is turned into heat. Although I will say this battery is big enough and it sure is nice to have the convenience of not needing a cable. So overall impressions on the design of this thing are really positive. I really feel like Blue Eddy has stepped up their game with this product. 
The overall fit and finish is quite a bit nicer. I like these integrated handles. They're really smooth. They are very grippable. And they have this really nice pattern in the plastic that really elevates it. There's this wavy pattern on the front, the sides, and the top that really make this feel like a premium product. In many ways, this reminds me of the design of the AC50. However, there it uses kind of a cheaper feeling rubber. And you can see the AC200P is massive compared to the AC50. But that's only a 500 watt hour unit. So how does this compare to the EB150, which is a 1500 watt unit? Well, they're roughly the same height, but the 200 is substantially thicker. So here's some shots of how they look like side by side so you can get a sense of scale. The 200P is pretty substantial. But I think the design touches that they've added really make this a very attractive product and feels very solid. Looking around the sides, there is a pair of fans at the top to keep airflow going through the unit and keeping it cool. The back is pretty simple. There's just a flat panel with some specifications on it. And of those, the thing that's most important to me is that this has some level of safety certification. And I really like that a larger company like Blue Eddy puts the time in to make sure their things are certified and they're safe. On the left hand side of the unit is an input panel at the bottom. There's two different kinds of connectors here. The left hand aviation style plug is for solar and car charging input. For solar, it can handle 35 to 150 volts and up to 700 watts of power. For car charging, it basically charges at 100 watts and is regulated to that. On the right-hand side is an 8mm input for the wall charger. So let's talk a little bit about accessories. So first of all, it all comes in this nice bag to keep things organized, which I appreciate. And the first and most important cable is this aviation to XT90 cable. So that plugs in and the XT90 is used to connect to these other cables. So there's an XT90 to MC4 to connect to pretty much any solar panel out there. And then there's also an XT90 to 12 volt cigarette lighter. And I'll say that I'm pretty impressed by the quality of these adapters and that they include all these in the box. So let's talk a little bit about how they connect to the unit and what the experience is like. So first of all, let's talk about the aviation cable. This thing is beautiful. Uh, I have never had this on a solar generator before, but this thing is machined aluminum. It's anodized. It has this really nice spring loaded quick release. And all you have to do is just slide it onto the connector. It'll lock into place with that locking ring. And then essentially you just take the other end of this cable, which is the male XT90, and you can plug that into either the solar or the car charger. Very simple and very strong. The other way to charge the AC200P is through the wall charger. And there's an eight millimeter plug on the back here that can accept up to 500 watts of power. And so that's what the plug looks like. It stays in fairly well. It could fall out if you're not careful. And this is the included 500 watt power brick. It's worth noting that if you multiply the voltage and amps here, it's actually 470 watts and that bears out in my testing. There is a fan on both ends of the power brick. So they're pushing and pulling air through it to keep it cool. And to set it up, all you have to do is plug in the included power cable, plug it into the wall and then plug it into the unit. In my experience, the wall charger delivered about 460 watts of power, which is really good. Uh, for a unit of this size, that means a charge time of about four and a half hours, which I think is reasonable. I just want to do a quick comparison of the power brick for the EB150 versus the AC200P. You can see the 200P is substantially larger, but they're pretty much the same design. And I just wanted to show you, this is the four wall chargers that I had to gang up for my Goal Zero Yeti to get a measly 240 watts of power. So I do appreciate these much higher power chargers these days. But with high power, there comes a lot of heat. And unfortunately, because of the two fans on the power brick, 
it's pretty darn loud. And to make matters worse, even when the unit is fully charged, or if it's not even connected to the unit, the fans are always on. I really wish they would spin them down and make this thing quieter. So the only other things that are included in the box is your warranty card. This has a two year warranty, which is uh, I think pretty standard for this industry. And it also has a fairly well done uh, instruction manual. It's written in good English. It has some clear diagrams. Uh, so no complaints on the documentation. Moving on, let's talk about user interface. So this has a really nice high quality metal power button with a green ring around it. And when you press it, it initializes because this thing's basically a freaking computer. Everything is accessible through this touch screen. On the home screen at the bottom, there's buttons to turn on and off the AC and DC output sections, as well as a summary of the input from solar or a car or the wall adapter and the output on AC and DC. There's a settings area where you primarily are going to use this to switch between solar and car charging and whether or not you want eco mode on or not to reduce the amount of battery draw. You can also set things like the date and time and all sorts of good stuff in here. Um, and then there's another area called data and data gives you product information, which just gives you model number and you know versions of things. Uh, the inverter and charger info and so this basically gives you a detailed breakdown of the numbers that you see on the home screen for solar wall charger DC output and AC output. So this is really cool. It gives you a lot of detailed information There's also some information about the current state of the battery and fault history and basically this lists out anything that has tripped a fault and you have a bunch of fault codes and you actually need to go over to the faults area and look up what the numbers mean. You know, I hate to be super critical here, but this seems kind of silly. The computer knows that error code 31 means that the inverter was overloaded. Why not just tell me that instead of telling me error 31? So this is kind of a curious design quirk, I suppose, but you know, maybe they can prove that down the road in a future software update. One little shortcut that I did appreciate is that you can tap on any of the information blocks on the home screen, whether it's the amount of solar input or the certain kinds of DC or AC output, and it'll drill you right down into the appropriate section in data. So that's a thoughtful little design touch. So I was excited to put the inverter through its paces uh, typically some of the Blue Eddy units I've reviewed in the past had fairly small inverters. This one is twice as powerful as the one that I tested in the EB150. And so I figured that this Breville espresso machine might be a good choice. Uh, here I am frothing milk, I used about 1300 watts, had no problem at all. And then I loaded up some espresso and was able to brew that no problem. I made a number of espressos on this. Everything worked flawlessly. Uh, the inverter never seemed like it was struggling. It didn't throw any errors at all. Uh, and you can see it's using over 1400 watts here. And it actually made a really good espresso. So this definitely works great for sort of larger kitchen style appliances that you might have around the house. They'll handle it no problem at all. All right, so I wanted to ramp up the test. The next thing I wanted to do is try a space heater. And so this is my Vornado 1500 watt space heater. I plugged it into my tracker here so I can see how accurate the display is. So on low, it's using 745, 50 watts, just as expected. Flipping into high, it's around 1400 watts of power and it handled it no trouble at all. And the nice thing is that the display is agreeing with my meter. It's very close to the same number. So that's very encouraging. Sometimes the uh, AC output can be really wonky on these units. So I'm happy with the accuracy of it. Now my meter can only handle 1875 watts. This unit can put out much more than that. So what I did is I kept my space heater directly plugged in. So that's 1400 watts. And then I plugged in this heat gun and I just wanted to monitor how much additional power. So what you see on the display here is in addition 
to the 1400 watts from the space feeder. So right now we're at 400 watts, so that's 1800 watts of power. And as I start ramping this up, uh, the fan started kicking on in the unit, but it handled it like a champ. And I think you can see on the screen here that we were at basically at 2150 watts. Uh, it was able to cruise along like this for about a minute. And then you can see the fault light did turn on and it did continue to run for a while after that. But then eventually it did shut the AC off. And if I tried turning it back on, it wouldn't turn on, which had me a little worried for a minute there. I kept hitting the on button and nothing would happen. And, you know, I checked the fault history and you can see that it did say that the inverter was over limit. What I ended up doing is just turning it off, waiting a few seconds and then turning it back on. And that seemed to do the trick. So a little scared at first, but really easy to get it reset and working again. So I would say overall, I was impressed with the performance of this. It performed exactly as rated. Next test is the capacity test. In this, we take a load at 400 watts in this case. So we have a 0.2 C discharge rate, which will mean that should drain the battery in about five hours. And the goal here is to find out exactly how much energy we can recover from the battery through the AC inverter. And I typically find that these generators will give me about 80% of their rated capacity back through AC. In the case of the AC200P, I was able to get 1,684 watt hours for 84% efficiency. Now, one of the main reasons you'd probably buy this is for backup in case you lose power. And so what I wanted to do is test this running as much of my house as possible. So I have two of the Goal Zero home integration kits, which are basically just transfer panels that allow me to connect up to four circuits per panel. And for this test, I decided to run six circuits that represent the key things I'd want on during a power outage. So what are those? Well, first of all, my on-demand water heater and the overhead lights in this guest bedroom, my son's bedroom, our bedroom, my daughter's bedroom, both bathrooms, the hallway, the dining room, all the overhead lights downstairs in the living room and kitchen, our refrigerator, and yes, even our full-size microwave. And you might be really surprised to hear that that was only pulling about 280 to 300 watts on average. When the fridge would kick on, that would go up a bit more. But really, to run all of those lights, if they're efficient LEDs, doesn't use that much power. However, if you fire up an appliance, well, things change there. So I just used my microwave here and put in some water and that really juiced up the power quite a bit. This thing would jump from about 400 Watts to 2200 Watts. So this is actually running over the max limit for this unit. And you see the fault light does go on. The interesting thing is it did not shut off. I was able to finish microwaving my cup of coffee. So I'll call this a successful test. So from a home backup perspective, this thing was a real trooper. I was very impressed that it could handle the loads I threw at it. And I was able to get this thing to run for over six hours. And that was including my fridge, my water heater, and all of those lights worked like a charm. All right, let's talk about solar charging. So this unit is interesting in that Yes, it handles 150 volts on the high end, which is great, but in the low end, it has a minimum voltage of 35, which means that if you have a typical 12 volt panel that's 19 volts or maybe 25 volts like these, it's not gonna work. If you just hook one up, you won't charge this unit at all. So what I decided to do is take three of these panels and wire them in series. So that should be about 75 volts, which is perfect for this right in the middle. And for that, we're gonna use the included cables. So this is the MC4 to XT90, and then that connects into the aviation cable. And then between the panels, I'm just connecting those in series like you normally would. 
and I'm always paranoid that I wired things wrong, always make sure that you use a multimeter and check your voltage. So this is 72.4 for these 300 watt panels in series, which is right on the money. You also have to, in the unit, go over and make sure under settings that it's set for PV and not car. And then all you have to do is connect all the cables together and use the aviation plug to make it all happen. Now this has a fully modern MPPT solar charger, which is fantastic for efficiency. However, you see I'm getting about 76 watts here, but that's just because the weather is terribly overcast, so not to worry. So for the next test, I decided to attach even more panels to hit the max. So now by connecting all of those, I was at 151 volts, which is a volt or so over the max. And when I did plug it in, it did give me an error. So wanted to make sure that that would trip as needed. And so the next step was to remove one of the six solar panels. So I was down to five wired in series and that ended up around 115 to 120 volts and everything worked flawlessly. So I can confirm that this thing can handle up to 150 volts and it does properly shut itself down if you put in anything higher than that. So the only real quirk here is that 35 volt minimum that will require that you probably have multiple panels in series. It's worth noting the 200 max fixes this limitation, so that is a nice improvement. For the final test, we want to look at car charging. Rather than drag this to my car, I'm going to use this external LFP battery, and this has a female cigarette adapter on it, and I can use that to plug the included male cigarette lighter adapter, and that all will go into the XT90s. And you got to make sure that you change your input source from PV to car, or this will not work. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. And once hooking it all up, I got a very solid 100 watts or even a little bit more, which I think is the perfect charging speed. If you pull too much power from your car, it's going to be very unhappy. Now, one negative I really want to point out is I found in my testing that this has a very high self-discharge rate. Basically, what this means is that if you turn this on, it will lose about 1% per hour. And in my testing, I didn't see a huge difference between having AC and DC on, or just AC or just DC or neither. Regardless, it would lose 1% an hour. So if you turn this on, it'll be dead in four days. So you gotta make sure to turn it off when you're not using it. So what's my bottom line on the AC200P? Well, overall, I think it's an amazing value and really the first thing I'm here for is the LFP chemistry. I think that's something that we should all be looking for in a solar generator, just because you get 3,500 cycles compared to say five to 800 cycles for a typical lithium ion battery. So EcoFlow, Goal Zero, Jackery, really better step up their game and start upgrading to this chemistry. I really like the overall industrial design and construction of this. I feel like the AC inverter performed flawlessly in all of my tests. The regulated 12 volt is excellent. The USB outputs are a little on the weak side, although I'm glad they're upgrading those in the max. And I really do appreciate these wireless chargers. I think they're a really cool feature and I use them all the time on this. On the user interface side of things, I really do appreciate this bright color touchscreen it does make accessing this rich information really easy to do. I do wish that this performed better in sunlight because I think this display really does fall down if you're trying to use it in a bright environment. The included solar and car charging cables worked great. And I really like that this ships with a high power wall charger. It's not quite as powerful as EcoFlow, but it does work really well, despite the noise. The unusually high self-discharge rate is worth noting, and you do have to keep tabs on it and keep this thing turned off if you're not using it. Overall, I'm very impressed with the AC200P. I would say this has the perfect mix of features, battery chemistry, performance, and price. Compared to Blue Eddy's previous offerings, this is definitely at a higher level of fit and finish and overall quality. And as far as competitors go, 
Well, really, your choices right now are the forthcoming EcoFlow Delta Max, which has the same size battery and inverter, although I think it uses the lithium ion chemistry. And for Goal Zero, I think it's interesting that they have a 3000 and a 1500, but they don't have a 2000. And I've always thought that was a curious submission. But for the 1500, which runs basically a little bit more than this Blue Eddy, you're going to get a 1500 watt hour lithium ion battery, but a slightly stronger inverter. Let me know in the comments what you think about the AC200P. Please consider subscribing. I'm going to be coming up with some very exciting Goal Zero videos in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching, everyone. Till next time.